Have you ever considered that we are living in a unique time, that something world-changing is about to happen, and that it might concern you? If so, you're in the right place. Keep listening, and you'll hear thought-provoking views behind the news that point to a new and better future for all. Many people now sense that humanity is not alone. So consider this. If the Christ or the Buddha walked among us today as modern men, would we recognize them? What would they be saying? And most importantly, would we listen? Every Sunday on this program, Share International Radio will examine extraordinary events that are unfolding behind the headline news. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. And now, welcome to this week's show. Welcome to the show. My name is Celito Pasquale. This is Share International Radio. I'm podcasting from Seattle in the Pacific Northwest region of the Ring of Fire on planet Earth. And we have a fantastic show today. And before we start with that, if you're listening for the first time, we have listeners all over the world. So welcome to our newcomers. The premise of this show is that humanity is not alone, that we have always had help of an extraordinary kind from a group of elder, elder uh, siblings of humanity, perfected humans who have guided uh, humanity's evolution for eon upon eon. They are spiritual beings, very straightforward, simple, totally respectful in their approach to humanity, and they are emerging into the modern world today. At the head of this group, the most senior member of this extraordinary group of perfected spiritual beings is the world teacher for all humanity, the eldest brother of, of the human race, Maitreya, the world teacher. And he is emerging into the modern world because we are at a very important transition point in, uh, in, in, in a cosmic cycle. We are at the dawn of a new cosmic cycle. And as has happened before throughout uh, human history, divine messengers have stepped forward at critical points. Uh, Krishna, Buddha, Confucius, Jesus, and Muhammad. And so Maitreya is emerging into the world today, not as a religious leader, but as a guide and teacher to help us find our way out of the tremendous um, the, the mess we find our world in, uh, the climate mess, the economic uh, disparities. And um, so all of this ties into another big topic, which is the topic of UFOs and our space brothers. So I'm very pleased to introduce our guest. His name is Gerard Ardson. He has a Master of Education degree from Amsterdam University, uh, where he uh, has held a teaching position in the School of Education for the past uh, 15 years or so. And Gerard Artson is also a student of the Ageless Wisdom Teachings. He has published three books on the topic of UFOs and Space Brothers, and we're going to find out why is this connected uh, to this story of the emergence of the Masters of Wisdom. All of this is interrelated. Gerard, thank you for being on the show. Welcome. Hello, Shilito. Uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And it is 1 o'clock in Seattle, so that means it's much later in Amsterdam, so I appreciate you staying up past your bedtime. Uh, tell us, let's start with uh, one question. Have you, have, well, let's see. How did you first hear, come across the ageless wisdom teachings that talk about the, the, the masters of wisdom? Um, I think, uh, well, I was still very young. I was almost, not entirely, but almost fresh out of school, high school. And um, I had bought my first book by Alice Ann Bailey, who is one of the main exponents uh, of the Ages Wisdom teachings, as they have been published in, uh, in modern times, starting with um, Madame Blavatsky uh, around 1875, 
the who founded the Theosophical Society and published uh, some very important works. Alice Ann Bailey expanded on the work uh, done by Madame Blavatsky. Um, and I was around 20 years old, I think, when I bought uh, a book by Alice Bailey. And I found it quite fascinating. And not f- not much, not long after that, I came across the first ever interview with Benjamin Cram, um, who is, as you well know, the uh, source of the information about the return to the world of uh, the world teacher and the masters of wisdom um, uh, in in uh, in the actual practical sense of of his yeah. uh, arrival in the modern world uh, in 1977. Um, that was uh, so shortly after I bought that Alice, and read the Alice Bailey book I, I came across his first interview in a Dutch magazine a New Age magazine and um, that made every sense to me in terms of answers I was looking for to the world's problems and uh, so uh, and it clicked with me right away so uh, that was 1978 and I, I contacted the uh, the group here in Holland uh, that uh, was soon to invite him for his first uh, lecture outside the UK and that's where it all started for me and of course Benjamin Cram is the chief editor of Share International magazine which inspired this podcast Share International Radio. Uh Krem is spelled C R E M E and he has a dozen and a half books that you can find on Amazon. His first book being The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom. So Gerard Let's fast forward a little bit. How did you come to be inter- in- interested in the topic of UFOs? Well, let's rewind a little bit. Uh, you just mentioned Benjamin Graham's first book, The Reappearance of the Christ and the Masters of Wisdom. And on the very first page, in his very first book, in, in the introduction, I believe, um, he mentions the Space Brothers and the role of the Space Brothers as... Um, uh, yeah, the visitors from the other planets in our solar system. Uh, oh, pardon me, Gerard. I'm going to ask you to. There's a little fuzz in, on the line, so I'll just ask you to to uh, speak again. Sure, I hope that sounds uh, great. That sounds great. All right. Um, so uh, on the very first page of his very first book, he mentions the important role of the Space Brothers in building the spiritual platform for. Uh, the reappearance of uh, the elder brothers of humanity, the masters of wisdom and and the world teacher at their head. So um, that from page one in the very first book that he wrote is uh, made it very clear, but also very fascinating because I had heard of and read the, one of the uh, books by uh, George Adamski, who was um, – not only one of the early contactees of the 1950s, but he was one of the main contactees of the 1950s in the sense that he always stuck to his story. He never wavered from the facts, uh, even in, in the face of intimidation or uh, attempts to um, to um, bribe him to to say that it was all a fabrication, etc. He always um, stayed true to what he knew, and that is that the uh, the flying saucers, the UFOs as we call them now, are visitors visiting from from other planets in our in our solar system, uh, as has also always been confirmed by Benjamin Graham and his master, mainly uh, from Venus and Mars, uh, some from Jupiter and Saturn and, and a few other planets. And he came across that information how. <laughs> He has George Adamski. Um, George Adamski. He's a, he's written some uh, some amazing books, and I'm just thinking for a moment. He also was a student of the Ageless Wisdom teaching. So all of this is uh, interconnected as far as as information. And w- w- how did he come to first uh, start? You know, what launched his interest to where apparently he traveled the world and had audiences numbering into the multiple hundreds, if not thousands. Exactly, yes. Uh, well, the official story is that uh, he first he was first contacted in November 1952 when he and a group of friends, on a, based on a hunch, um, 
that he had uh, drove into the desert in, in California. Um, at one point, he asked his friend to stop the car. He got out and uh, walked uh, uh, a bit of a distance into, well, the, the, the foothills. And uh, his friends from a distance saw a saucer landing and a person stepping out. And the person and Adamski obviously talked for a while. And Adamski wrote about this in his part of the book, Flying Saucers Have Landed, which caused quite a stir uh, when it first appeared in 1953. And you However, know, I, I want to make an interesting point because I read that book. And they didn't just come out of the sky. It's not like he had this thought and said, come on, guys, let's get in the car and drive. He had been photographing the night sky for two years with no success, apparently, before that uh, contact. Yes, is that, absolutely. Is that correct? Um, he, uh, he had uh, published his first photographs already in, in Fate magazine, for instance. And uh, um, he was, he, even in 19, if I'm not mistaken, 1946 or 1949, he had published a pamphlet uh, called uh, The Possibility of Life on Other Planets. And uh, according to the George Adamski Foundation, he had contacts, and, and which confirms my suspicions, he had contacts um, before, long before 1952, um, and he actually uh, wrote about those contacts in, uh, in another book, Pioneer of, Pioneers of Space, um, that was published in 1949. Yeah, eventually it was published. Uh, he had, uh, it seems he had great difficulty getting it published, and they would finally, he found someone who would publish it as long as he would call it science fiction. Oh, I see. Um, Interesting. But as I, as I document in my first book, Adamski was actually um, tutored and, and guided by uh, Space Brothers as a teenager. Okay, we'll, go, we'll continue that thought after the break, and we'll talk more about the books that you have written, Gerard. Stay with us. We'll come back after the break to share international radio. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Are you on a spiritual path and want a quick reference guide? Look no further. The booklet Ageless Wisdom Teaching introduces key spiritual concepts including reincarnation, meditation, and initiation. Download the book free online. Visit ShareOnTheAirRadio.org for details. That's ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. ShareOnTheAirRadio.org. Come heal yourself. What is healing? Healing is nothing but connecting with your all-knowing higher self that already has solutions to all your problems and is always there to guide you. Through this show, we help you to connect with that you are and tap into that innate potential you have to transform your life and fly high. Please join me, your host Monica Goyal, every Sunday, 7 p.m. Pacific. Namaste. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Welcome back to Share, Inter Share International Radio. This is Cielito Pasquale with author Gerard Artson. We're talking about 
the Space Brothers, their work, their mission, and why they are. We're seeing so many visitations by craft, or we're witnessing them in the skies uh, to a much more dramatic effect. Every day there seems to be something online posted, a uh, video or images. Um, a lot of, it seems like, a lot of activity that cannot be explained by anything that we know of. Uh, so, Gerard, uh, we were talking about Adamski. Uh, you had discovered Benjamin Krem's writings. You also discovered uh, uh, Adamski's writings and, and saw how the two dovetailed. Uh, you have been a student of the Ageless Wisdom teachings for many, many years, and um, uh, in a matter of time, your your interest really deepened. Um, you just published uh, a new book. You've published three books on UFOs. Uh, your most latest book is Priorities for a Planet in Transition, The Space Brothers' Case for Justice and Freedom. And I, I love this book because you very... Uh, elegantly weave together a lot of, of previously documented information, published information, and you show the correspondences uh, between the testimony of contactees with the story that uh, Benjamin Krem has been putting forth through his books about the Masters of Wisdom. Um, pretty complex effort, and you've done it so well. Uh, prior to that, you published uh, Here to Help, UFOs, and the Space Brothers. And both books have wonderful il- uh, photographs and re- just compelling images that I never knew existed. How, how did you... There's so much information out there about UFOs, a ton, and people make a lot of money <laughs> on the topic because it's very popular. Um, how did you select the information that you wanted to uh, include in your books? Well, what I do is is go back to the accounts of the original contactees of the 1950s because we know for a fact that somewhere in the mid-1950s, uh, the government and the military became concerned with about the the massive public interest in the stories of especially George Adamski, but the others in, in the United States in any case as well. Um, because they were asked by their contacts from space to inform humanity that life is one and that we need to learn to live as one on this planet lest we destroy ourselves. And, of course, we have to remember this was in the midst of the Cold War with the the standoff between the the West and the East, the West uh, um, led by by the United States and the East Bloc um, uh, under the Soviet Union. Uh, and there was a massive, uh, if only psychological threat of, uh, of nuclear war. Um, and, and, um, and there was actually a threat of nuclear annihilation. Uh, so the, uh, the message from, the sp- from space, from the space people, was quite urgent, uh, uh, asking us to, uh, to uh, relinquish our uh, atomic weapons and, and the technology. And, and try to uh, find a basis for international cooperation. Um, this, this message uh, gained so much interest and, and popularity that, uh, which of course went against uh, the national interests of, uh, of the Western countries and the Eastern countries, um, that, uh, well, for what we know in the West, uh, they were actively debunked and ridiculed and defamed and uh, lots of disinformation was fed into the public through contactees or alleged contactees or whistleblowers to ridicule this whole uh, this whole story of uh, visitors from space so uh, what i do is i look first of all at the accounts from before this uh, disinformation campaign started i look for similarities in the accounts so that uh, you know there's uh, there's a, a good reason to uh, to uh, accept that certain uh, uh, facts in the accounts have been corroborated by uh, by others. 
have been seen or, or told to others. And from there, you can, you can extrapolate and, and uh, find in, in the accounts of, of later contactees uh, which parts cor- uh, cor- um, correspond or not. So then you have a fairly solid body and, and quite, uh, quite uh, extensive, I might add, um, about you know the purpose for the uh, for the extraterrestrial visits um, and and uh, their intentions. Uh, so you know it's it's quite it's in fact it's quite simple what I do, but you have to go through uh, through those early works, uh, which were actually uh, you know until fairly recently not considered uh, seriously anymore by uh, by any UFO researchers. And so largely almost forgotten. Um, if no one's giving it attention, you know, new generation comes about and no one knows that those books exist. And exactly. uh, so it's wonderful that you're, you're bringing all this forward. You know, when we think of contactees, uh, when I think of contactees, I picture uh, a remote road uh, at, the, uh, at the foot of the mountains in the woods, uh, you know, one, one driver, you know, blinded by light and having to get out of the car and whatnot. But actually... There are cases where um, uh, many, many, many people were were in interaction with our space brothers over a considerable amount of time. We're not talking about just a remote uh, uh, situation um, or, or, or a one-off situation, and that would uh, include the the friendship case as being a a, a, a very interesting um, interaction. Can you talk about that? Yes, you're, you're referring to the uh, Amicitia case in Italy, and um, more uh, b- b- more importantly, or equally importantly, um, not only were over 120 Italians involved in that case from 1956 onward, uh, which started in the uh, in the uh, region of uh, um, Pescara in Italy, the, on the east coast, um, but uh, many of them were also very high. High-ranking, you know, or well-known um, social figures. Uh, for instance, uh, a very, um, uh, very uh, well-known uh, person was uh, a consul, uh, a career diplomat, Alberto Perego, uh, who himself wrote several books um, documenting sightings and uh, etc. He didn't really write about his involvement in the in the friendship case but uh, he, he was clearly um, uh, dedicated to making known the uh, the reality of the the visitors from space and and collecting media newspaper reports etc in his books uh, that was one example several professors were involved um, one particularly uh, Bruno Samosiccia uh, whose story was the basis for the book Mass Contacts that uh, appeared in English translated in English in I believe 2009 um, and he was a psychologist and a theologian uh, there was an artist involved, and these were people. Most of them, uh, in, in comparison to uh, many of the more well-known contactee cases, um, very often, you know, involved just one individual. Although there would be uh, witnesses, um, these people in the in the friendship case were not so much invited on board flying saucers or motherships for trips around the planet or into the solar system, but uh, into their underground bases, which were uh, scattered uh, around Italy and according to uh, accounts from people in other branches of the friendship case uh, around Europe and, and uh, Russia, um, in those, uh, you know, the rest of the European continent as well. Uh, so they were they were invited into um, not by the hundreds but in in small groups uh, into the underground uh, underground bases um, you know uh, f- sometimes uh, you know they they haven't been very specific uh, about what they were taught but again in their accounts uh, they point out uh, the the main the main uh, message from from the people from space, which is we are one 
human race on this planet, but throughout cosmos as well. And uh, we are our brother's keeper. We have to look after each other. And it's very interesting to see that they uh, they are bringing the same message as the uh, not only the ages wisdom teachings, but also the major religions on earth on earth, which which of course are. Uh, representations uh, more or less correct of the wisdom teachings Mm -hmm. you know it's a simple message and yet here we are today really uh, on where we don't know uh, how much longer we're going to last on this planet it it seems uh, quite perilous right now Um, so I, I want to get the conversation started before our break a little bit about getting our mind around what that means uh, to relinquish our weapons. You know, uh, we, we, there's such an industry, uh, the, the military and the oil industry, so so deeply entrenched into uh, every aspect of our lives and our consciousness even Um, So, in your book, Priorities for a Planet in Transition, you actually describe, you you have the compilation of the the testimony of contactees describing the economic uh, uh, systems and how they function on other planets where people work uh, one to three, three hours a day at the maximum. Um, and are able to use the rest of the time for study, uh, education, travel, being of service, um, doing things that are meaningful. They're not stuck in traffic the way (laughs) we are. Mm. (laughs) Um, And, you know, from from that mundane aspect of our life on up, I think sometimes I I wonder if um, uh, we are a little hesitant to know about our space brothers because we're worried they're going to like, yeah, we got it better than you guys. You guys are messed up. Um, you know, maybe we're concerned about being judged a bit. But what's another way to perceive uh, why they're here uh, without fear? Well, I hear the uh, music uh, coming up, so well, uh, maybe so- I'll uh, think about that. Yes. <laughs> We'll give that some thought. If you have a question, go to Share International Radio on Facebook. Post your question. And David, uh, standing by to send that as a Skype message to me, please uh, interact with us. And we'll be back after the break. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Share International Magazine is unique in the world today. It draws connections that make sense between headline news and spiritual changes unfolding now on a global scale and explains the forces driving those changes. It may be the message of hope you have been waiting for. Investigate for yourself at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. Shareontheairradio.org. Searching for a perspective beyond the mainstream? Check it out. Join your hosts, Yelito Pasquale and Diana Gold Holland, on Share International Radio for thought provoking views behind the news. Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, on Ohm Times Radio. You can also find us at shareontheairradio.org. This may be the message of hope you've been waiting for. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Welcome to the gathering around my kitchen table on Equilarium FM, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join my guests as we integrate spirituality into everyday reality with vibrant conversations, inspired interviews, and my latest channeled guidance. 
to inspire and brighten your day. I'm Claire Johnson, and together we'll be raising vibrations across the nations. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. We're back on Share International Radio with author Gerard Artson. And if you are enjoying what you're hearing, you can follow Gerard on Facebook. You'll find him linked on our or tagged on our posts at Share International Radio on Facebook. If you do a search, Gerard Artson, Priorities for a Planet in Transition, you'll find his website um, and, and links to just a, a wealth of information, not just on UFOs and Space Brothers, but uh, on the Ageless Wisdom teachings, the many different authors um, that are covering that topic. Uh, you'll, you'll find tremendous information to, to follow up on. So, Gerard, I, I asked a convoluted question, and I guess uh, the, probably um, how, the simplest way to ask it is how, for, for those who are, so, you know, the, the, the disinformation um, that began in the, in the 50s into the 60s and was really successful because then the media... Uh, integrated those ideas into movies and TV shows, you know, Little Green Men. We we are quite thoroughly conditioned to feel a sense of uh, um, uh, great hesitation around the topic. And I can sense that when I post things on my Facebook page. Um, how, wh- what would you like to illuminate for, uh, pe- for, for those of us who are uh, questioning this, you know, why should we know about the Space Brothers? Questioning uh, the idea of, of a- acknowledging this information. Well, I, I don't know if I can, you know, I don't see it as my task to try and convince people that the extraterrestrial presence on Earth is real. Uh, there has been such a wealth of evidence. Um, uh, accounts from people from throughout, you know, so, you know all social strata uh, across the world. Um, people who want to deny it uh, clearly have a problem with, uh, you know, broadening their worldview, and and you can't really blame people. Um, but so you know, the, the space brothers, the space people, um, respect our free will and our right to deny the obvious. Um, so they will not force their presence on us. Uh, they will. Con- they have been contacting people. Uh, they have been here for millennia, for as long as, as humanity has existed on this planet. There's uh, historical records, uh, even you know, in the old scriptures, the Bible and and the Bhagat, uh, or the Mahabharata. The Indian uh, scriptures. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> you have to you have to want to know it, and you have to want to be aware of the extraterrestrial presence, and and uh, otherwise you're probably steeped in the reductionist, materialistic view of life that really characterizes much of mainstream science today. But what um, what I think is important to to take away from the awareness uh, that they are here is uh, you know the the fact that they not only subscribe to but they really their presence and the the way they go about contacting us and teaching us or informing us about uh, uh, the uh, yeah, the necessities of life, the spiritual realities of life, um, shows how how much they are in concert with the with the wisdom teachings, the respect for hum- humanity's free will, the need for acting on a realization of our brotherhood, the the fact that we are one human race, uh, that everything in cosmos is interrelated. And that we have to put that, those things into practice. That they're not just beautiful platitudes or uh, thoughts that we can contemplate on sitting by our candle and an incense stick. We have to put them into practice in our daily lives in the way we relate to our neighbors, our physical neighbors, but also our 
uh, you know, more figuratively, uh, people in other countries, people who have to flee war zones or zones of economic oppression uh, for a better life or for prospects for their children. And, um, you know, before the break, you you mentioned um, um, arms, weapons, etc. These these industries exist and 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 uh, flourish because of this ingrained, deeply ingrained sense of competition. We have built our structures on in our world today on uh, greed and competition. Those are the two driving. Uh, forces, it seems, in in our world, in our daily lives, we're even we've even allowed political systems to uh, to get to the point where we now have to compete for jobs at the lowest possible wages, below living wage level, you know, and and we have to realize that that is. In, in effect, our own doing through governments that we have voted for or we haven't voted for for lack of interest or lack of uh, participation or, or uh, sense of uh, the need to participate. And uh, we have to reconnect with the fact that we are the, the, uh, the directors of our own lives and that's what the, the world teacher and the masters and the space people are here to show us unless we act nothing will change it will only get worse because the people who are in power are the people who have the power and have the money to to uh, mold and shape uh, the systems uh, to their to their own advantage um, so we have to, if we want justice and freedom we will have to stand up for it mm-hmm. Let me ask you, what is your – you open up a whole big uh, realm of, 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 of questions, but I'm, I'm thinking of what the average person might be thinking. They're probably wondering, have you been contacted by a space brother or two? Uh, not knowingly. Not knowingly. I, I, <laughs> no. I mean, I, I'm not aware of having been contacted, and I doubt, if, doubt that I have, in fact. And, and also, if you look at the wealth of information that's been available since the 1950s and unfortunately has been ignored for the most part, um, I, I really don't see a need for me to be contacted. You know, all I needed was to, uh, to find the, uh, the, uh, the correct – the right books uh, and, and uh, have a critical look at, uh, at uh, what they were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, in. I mean, remembering, um, I was just about to look it up before we had to go online, but I remember you did publish an article in Share International. You've published a number of articles, um, uh, an article about uh, uh, two world leaders who are speaking publicly about their interaction uh, with with Space Brothers. Can you talk about that? Um, yes, well, you know, most of my articles uh, were were used in in some form or shape uh, in uh, as the basis for chapters in my books and i think you're referring to um for instance um kirsan ilyumzhinov who was the president of the southern russian state of kalmykia until i think 2005 or 2010 I don't remember exactly uh, he's also still the president of the world chess federation and he was uh, contacted in uh, 1997, in September 1997, while he was in his uh, apartment in, in Moscow. And he spent hours, according to his account, on, uh, on a mothership where he was invited. And afterwards, he's been quite open to speak about the experience, of course, uh, denounced and ridiculed by, by the media. Uh, but, um, but nevertheless, he's been, he's been quite forthcoming in answering uh, reporters' questions. Um, and the interesting fact is that uh, his, uh, his assistants and his driver um, were in his apartment upon his return. And uh, they say he could not have come through the front door. They had checked his apartment already and he was nowhere to be found. And uh, he came back through the balcony where he was also picked up of his uh, uh, apartment, which is on the, I believe, in the top floor of, of this particular uh, building. Um, so they they suddenly saw him back in his apartment and were wondering, because they were, they were just about to raise alarm, 
about his absence. And they said, how did you get back? So, it, it, and, and he had, uh, you know, only good things to say about his hosts from space. And they, he said, they're people just like us. They, they think in, in the same way. They communicate in the same way. Um, so that was a very, rather, well, rather high profile, um, contactee. Um, there have been others in my new book, Priorities for a Planet in Transition. I, uh, I document uh, the case of uh, um, uh, Bulgarian professor Lachesar Filipov, and he was the deputy director of the Bulgarian Space Agency, Space Research Agency. And um, he bluntly stated that the extraterrestrials are here and uh, they are more advanced than we are. Um, we are not advanced enough yet to uh, to contact them, but they are here to help. Um, and um, of course, he was of of, of course uh, you know in good uh, academic tradition. He was stripped of his positions uh, when he was uh, so open about uh, the information that he had obtained somehow. Mm-hmm. And and another case uh, that was it has been known about since 2012, December 2012, is the former Russian president and and current Russian Prime Minister uh, Dmitry Medvedev, who um, who confirms that the the Russians and of course uh, like the Americans and and many other nations have a uh, an active file. Uh, that deals with the reality, the facts of the extraterrestrial visitors in so, this case in Russia. So we yes. we have an, obviously, and you say this on your website. You have a a video of it. Just a high-ranking official after high-ranking official saying there w- extraterrestrials are visiting this planet, and some of them are saying I've interacted with them. It's quite open and it's quite out there. Um, so there's nothing being hidden, which is rather remarkable. And yet there's this kind of uh, uh, this atmosphere of like, oh, there's something to disclose because things are being hidden. And you're saying that quite a few people have been quite candid and quite public at great risk. Yes, well, uh, there's, there's plenty that has been hidden and been kept uh, secret from, from the public, hidden from the public. Um, but uh, 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 remarkably... Many, many high-ranking individuals, dignitaries, have been speaking out over the past five, six decades. And uh, as I've done before, you know, I've, I've looked for their particular statements, the sources, and compiled this, this brief uh, video compilation. And it's really a powerful uh, statement of disclosure. We'll have that on our Facebook page. We'll be right back after the break talking about the emergence of Maitreya and the Day of Declaration. Gerard Arts. The cutting edge of conscious radio. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Want to help build the coming golden age? Want to experience the Aquarian energies of love, light, and power? Transmission meditation is a simple way for you and two or more friends to do just that and accelerate your own spiritual growth at the same time. Check out transmission meditation at shareontheairradio.org. That's shareontheairradio.org. If you've ever said, I do, I do want it all. I do want happiness. I do want love. And I do desire the happily ever after fairy tale life. Then this show is for you. Join me, Dean Nicole Brandon, for my internationally acclaimed show, Bridal Talk Radio every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time, where I'll bring you the top experts in the fields of communication, money, relationships, finance, pleasure, play, travel, sexuality, parenting, real estate, adventure, comfort, care, passion, and love. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. 
live with medium Lisa Phoenix, mediumship messages and musings, explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your hosts on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Welcome back, Share International Radio. I'm Cielito Pasquale, podcasting from Seattle with Gerard Artson in Amsterdam. And I'm looking at the latest issue of Share International magazine, the print issue, December uh, this month. And on page 11, there's a... Four-page spread. It's amazing. Every issue has extraordinary images of Space Brothers craft uh, manifesting in many different ways. Maybe our audience is familiar with the the idea of UFO clouds. That's become quite uh, uh, familiar to people. Uh, The UFOs seem to be manifesting in very dramatic ways. I, I want to mention... A photograph. We have, have it posted on the Facebook page. Uh, a friend of mine, she's a f- photographer here in Seattle, Linda Hurst. Uh, she was photographing at about 5.30 in the morning, photographing the moon, uh, took a picture. It wasn't anything remarkable, she, she knew, because it was blurry. But when she um, downloaded it to her computer, the series of five photos, she saw the image of an eye in the sky. And um, she posted it to Facebook. I immediately asked her if I could send that to the editors of Share International. And um, it was confirmed by Benjamin Krem's master that the eye in the sky was manifested by the Space Brothers. Gerard, why do you think, I think the average person would wonder, why are they doing all this dramatic stuff? Why can't they just, you know, let's get to it, you know, land, talk to us. You know, get on the airwaves, uh, share share your technology, help us clean up the environment. Why aren't they doing that? Well, they are helping cleaning up to clean up the environment in ways that uh, most of us and uh, our scientists uh, don't understand. Uh, but just remember the the motion pictures, the the movies. Uh, you know, the majority, the vast majority of movies coming out of Hollywood and elsewhere um, about. Um, extraterrestrials are about an alien threat. So when they would do a great big landing somewhere, uh, imagine how many people would get a heart attack just because it's so imbued in the in, in the human mind, in our thinking, that when they come, they must be dangerous. And, and in fact, they are the opposite. Um, and so they, they take great care not to cause that kind of uh, scare and, and a number of deaths just by, you know, heart attacks and, and stuff like that. Um, uh, but their, um, you know, their presence here is in support of this, this great event that you mentioned, the Day of Declaration. And so they are supporting um, the, the masters of wisdom who are, have been um, – uh, manifesting uh, miracles, signs of all kinds, uh, uh, especially since the uh, the late 1980s, um, to prepare humanity, to give humanity hope, uh, depending on their particular religious background, uh, or for n- people of, of no particular religious background uh, um, uh, specifically, um, but in all kinds of ways to 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 make people wonder and aware that there uh, there are there uh, there are higher realities uh, uh, in in this life and there's more to life than just the the dreary day-to-day work and and trying to pay the bills etc and that we are really um, in the, on the verge of this momentous uh, momentous event where the world teacher Maitreya by name uh, will uh, reintroduce himself 
to humanity on a global scale. This time, not in one particular part of the world, as you know, histor- historically happened, but uh, to the whole world uh, at once through a television, internet, a radio broadcast, um, and giving humanity a tremendous, a profound experience of its oneness. Um, so humanity needs to be prepared for this uh, to the extent possible. Uh, we in, in the Share International, with Share International magazine, the groups that have been working with Benjamin Krem since he started his uh, mission in 1974 around the world, um, you know, all kinds of people have tried to inform humanity, um, and uh, of course. Uh, you know, they are, we are uh, several thousand, three, four thousand people active in, in making this story known. So, uh, fortunately, we also get the help uh, the, uh, from the Masters and the, and the Space Brothers who try in every possible way without infringing our free will to alert humanity at, uh, at large um, uh, that uh, there's something, something great afoot. So on this, we, we talk about this day of declaration. We often run out of time on our show because our guests have so much to share. Uh, so I appreciate that you're talking about it. Uh, but it is very important to to know that this is an unprecedented event for humanity. What you just described, this uh, 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 um, uh, Maitreya presenting himself to all of humanity simultaneously, and apparently it will uh, occur thanks to our satellite uh, communications. Every person in the world will be it who's near a television set um, or anything that transmits <laughs> images will be able to see Maitreya. Um, the world media will have organized this, and um, it is important for us to realize that we can invoke this event uh, into happening sooner by us being aware of the story, um, being aware of all these miracle events. Uh, you can see that on the Share International, share-international.org. If you go there, bringing attention uh, of these amazing uh, um, UFO phenomena, amazing miracle phenomena to the media, bringing the story up about the masters and Maitreya. That is really important for ordinary people to demand more information about this event. And, and you th- know what, if, if I may, yes. there's, there's very interesting um, um, uh, announcements and corroborations of the information from coming from Benjamin Krem in accounts of some of the contactees. If, if uh, in, in my previous book, for instance, I quote from uh, the account of uh, Giorgio Di Bitonto, an Italian contactee who was not directly, I believe, involved in the friendship case that we discussed, but who had his own experiences in, in 1980. Um, and he was told that humanity will travel, this is quoting from his book, humanity will travel through a wilderness in comparison to which the one that the Hebrews overcame would seem like an oasis. Well, the wilderness that is referred to, we see around us now with the systems crumbling under our feet, you know, the, the impending economic and financial collapse. And they said, they told this Mr. Dibitonto, the Hebrews were led by a great universal brother who was born here in order to fulfill this important mission. His name was Moses. You will be led by a new Moses whom we all love and admire greatly. He will lead all the people on this new exodus like a good brother or father. And there are several other uh, uh, hints uh, to this, this uh, huge event that, uh, um, that, that awaits humanity and that most of humanity unfortunately is not aware of. And I would encourage our listeners to uh, go into our archives uh, Share International Radio on Ohm Times Radio. Go into the archives. Last week, uh, my colleague Diana Gold Holland interviewed the journalist Patricia Pitchon, who described some extraordinarily amazing, beautiful experiences that she had uh, directly with interacting, interacting with Maitreya. I think she describes about three events. And um, she de- describes different kinds of very deep, blissful experiences of love um, just from 
uh, c- connecting her gaze with with Maitreya. It's an she, she, what she describes is quite interesting, and she also describes um, having been in contact with uh, another journalist, a journalist uh, in Nairobi, who witnessed Maitreya appearing to thousands of people at uh, a, a, at a healing event uh, many years back. It was reported on CNN. So uh, you, it's it is. It's a challenge to get the mind around it a bit, but also it makes perfect sense that at this time, a great teacher is stepping forward where humanity finds itself in crisis, ready to to guide and inspire us uh, forward. And uh, to further describe this event of Day of Declaration, we'll, we, we will see Maitreya on television, but he will, we will not hear him with our ears speaking. We will hear his message in our head, um, in our own language, and Maitreya will present to humanity a choice whether to continue as we are going in the modes uh, that we're living under, greed and competition, or to choose differently, to choose, um, to choose sharing and cooperation uh, as the way to repair the world. In fact, I'll share a message very quickly from Maitreya, message number 126. Make it your task then to teach the law of sharing of justice and truth. Help men to realize that without justice and manifested love, all else is as not. Mankind stands on the threshold of this discovery of truth. My presence among you guarantees that this is so. Do you have any final words, Gerard, before we uh, sign off uh, uh, about the Space Brothers and uh, Maitreya? Well, yes, uh, the, uh, I think the, um, the message that you just read uh, uh, says it, sums it up, uh, and, and it uh, coincides with the message from the, from the space people that I've uh, presented in my latest book. We have to make it work. We have to make it reality. We have to stand up for justice and freedom, for what is right, uh, to repair what is wrong in this world. Thank you so much, Gerard. Tune in next week. We'll have Elisa Graf. An ordinary citizen who's had extraordinary experiences interacting with Space Brothers. Thank you so much, Gerard. Thank you. It was my pleasure.